Um, so today's topic, guys, what I what I wanted to go over, um, I'm titling it "Shifting from Agent to Marketer," and um, I'm going to share my screen and kind of go over some notes that I have here, just kind of some bullet points that we're going to touch on. Um, So shifting from agent to marketer, guys, um, really what this is all about is it's really all about just understanding that you are not just a real estate agent, right? If you want to book more appointments and you want to get more leads and generate more opportunity, you have to shift your mindset to thinking like a marketer and thinking, um, you know, how do clients respond? What do clients, you know, go through? What are issues that clients have that you can potentially solve and stuff like that. This way you can be more effective when you're out there talking to people, whether you're on the phone, whether you're face to face, whether you're at an open house, whether you're on a listing appointment, you know, buyer presentation, it's really just ingraining into your mind that you are not just a real estate agent. Yes. Your title is a real estate salesperson when you get your license, but at the end of the day, you have to be a marketer. You have to be someone who knows how to speak the language that's going to resonate with people and position yourself as a marketer so that you get more people wanting to come to you. And when you actually do meet, meet with people, you'll be a lot more effective uh, when you're trying to convert them either to a lead or to a, an appointment or either to a sale, right? So I'm going to kind of start off with some of these bullet points here, and then we'll kind of open up some discussion. But um, the mindset behind it, right? is just understanding, number one, what most agents do, right? Most agents, like they get into this industry because they're attracted to either, you know, helping people or they're attracted to the commissions and stuff like that. They go out and get their license, but they've never really had any true marketing experience. They never had any true sales experience. Um, a lot of them came from industries that were completely different. And they want to go into, into real estate, but they don't realize that real estate is a sales job at the end of the day, right? At the end of the day, you're trying to convince someone on why they should do business with you. So most agents just do whatever they feel or whatever comes naturally to them. And they don't really have any sort of background on like, what's the proper way to market yourself or how, do you, how are you more effective with the message that you put out there when you're communicating with people? Right. Most agents are just going to say, hey, you know, if you're looking to buy or sell, call me. Um, if you guys have done videos or have put content out there, raise your hand. If you guys have ever said like, hey, if you're looking to buy or sell, you know, DM me or call me. Raise your hand if you've ever said that, like either at an appointment or at an open house or on one of the videos that you put out there or on one of your posts on social media. Hey, if you're looking to buy or sell, or you know someone who's looking to buy or sell, give me a call. Or something. They do more through. like if they have like questions, or like yeah, if they're looking to buy or sell and they have questions, they can contact me. Right, or that too. Right, like hey, if you have any questions, message me. Right, that's what. So that's what most agents do, because naturally, like what we think is, hey, if I just say, hey, if you're looking to buy or sell, maybe someone will just respond to me. Right. And someone will say, Hey, I saw you on Instagram. I'm looking to buy, I'm looking to sell, or I have a question. So of course it should already be implied, right? Like it should already be in your head. Like if someone's looking to buy or sell, they're going to reach out to you, right? Or they're going to reach out to someone, right? So saying like, are you, if you're looking to buy or sell, or if you have any questions, give me a call. There's no magic in that, right? You're not doing anything special that is giving them an important enough reason to give you a call or to reach out to you. Do you guys get what I'm trying to say there? It's simply kind of like a default statement, right? Like at the end of your pitch or at the end of whatever you're doing, it's kind of like a default. Hey, if you're looking, if you have any questions, you're looking to buy or sell, give me a call. So that's what most agents do, right? Because they don't understand kind of the psychology behind sales or high level sales or high level marketing. So I want us to now reframe our minds to like the next time you you're going to say that right I want you to think twice before saying that right there should be a reason why someone is going to call you or why someone is going to 
it should be like in whatever pitch that you gave them, right? You gave them a good enough reason for them to want to reach out to you. Um, any questions on that part? Can you give an example of what like you mean incorporating out of video content and what exactly you mean? Yes, so I'll, I'll, I'm gonna be covering that throughout this, right? So that'll come up shortly. Um, but I guess the question is, do you understand what I'm saying? Like most agents do this, right? That's, that's step one. Okay, so now the mindset that we have to have is we have to have the mindset of, we're not just a real estate agent, right? We're a marketer, right? Our job is to market ourselves. Our job is to market ourselves in a way that gets people to wanna call you. But also when you meet with people or when you're going to meet with someone, you want to come off from a position of you being a consultant or an advisor, right? Almost like if you were to go hire an attorney or if you were to go see like a doctor or a specialist, they probably would talk to you in a lot different of a way than if you were to go to like a car salesman, right? But what happens is that most real estate agents they conduct themselves, I guess, like, a, like how you would classify like a car salesperson. Like, hey, look at this house. It's a great house. Come buy it, right? It's nice and shiny. Come buy it. Instead of like asking the right questions or seeing like what the client actually really needs or does the client have like any sort of concerns or is there a pain point or what their experience has been like or what's going to be the right house for them and what their needs are and like really going like at a deep level of trying to understand the client and then giving advice based off of what the client is telling you. So there's a difference between being like a car salesman or someone who's just selling like a product versus I'm going to more ask you questions and then I'm going to consult you and I'm going to advise you to figure out what's right for you based off whatever you tell me. So that's the big difference, right? Is sales, I'm going to write here, salesperson versus consultant or advisor, right? Um, has anybody ever dealt with like a, had like a typical salesperson interaction, like where you've gone somewhere and it was just like a salesperson? And you really felt like they were just trying to close you on like getting something or paying for something or buying something or a product. Um, who would like to share? Maybe like, give me, give me an example of that. Okay. okay. I'll just share quickly. <laughs> Um, I was buying my car and we were looking at a, obviously I was at a car dealership, <laughs> but they brought, we actually weren't, we were just looking because I like to go look at cars a lot and test drive a bunch of cars. And so we were at one of the dealerships and then they were like, I was looking at a truck and they were just kind of like, what does it take to get this in your house tonight? Like, and then another guy came out, are you getting good service? We want to make sure you get it tonight. And then another guy came out, well, I'm their manager and I want to make sure you're, you're going to, what can I do to give you the keys tonight? And then you could take it for 24 hours. And then they just kept sending new guys out and higher rankings in the company to just close us that minute that night. And what price do we need to be at? You know? And it was just like, it just was uncomfortable, but that I remember that when you asked. <laughs> okay. That's, that's a great example. That's a really, really good example, right? And what you said, like multiple salespeople said, what's it going to take to get you to take the car tonight or to get you the keys tonight or to get you to buy it right now, right? That was obviously, I mean, and probably what you felt is you felt like, hey, these guys don't care at all about like what's best for me. They just care about making a sale happen right then and there, right? So that's a really, really good example. Um, of just a salesperson, right? Someone who's just trying to sell you something and they're trying to get you to leave with the product right there on the spot, right? I had a, I had a similar experience and uh, at a car dealership and I wanted a certain type of car and they they only had one and they didn't want to finance that because it was kind of older and they're just, hear all these other cars take any other one. I'm like, no, this is the only one you have. You can't finance it. And they're like, no, what about this one? This one I was like, no, that's the one I want. So yeah, same kind of thing. Okay. 
Another good example, right? So similar, right? Salesperson, car sales. Now, let me ask you this. Have you guys ever been, been at an open house and said the words to the person like, hey, do you guys want to make an offer on this house? Hey, do you guys want to get the disclosures to make an offer? Or hey, like let's set a time to meet so we get the disclosures and help you write an offer on this house. Or like, hey, if you work with me, I can give you like the inside information on, on to write the offer on the house. Has anybody ever done that? Or have you seen someone do that? Raise your hand. Okay, so what's the difference between that car salesperson and someone at an open house just trying to close you on writing an offer? It's almost the same thing, right? It's almost the same type of like sales tactic of like you have someone in front of you, you're just trying to close them. You're not really seeing what's right for them or if that house is even right for them before you're just trying to ask for the sale or trying to get them to the sales table, right? So that's the big thing, right? That's how we drive this home, right? It's, it's we want to take that salesperson's hat on, off and we want to go to, if you're at the car dealership, like, um, hey, Lisa, I see you've been looking at trucks. Let me ask you, what do you like most about the truck, right? Or, or why are you going after a truck instead of a sedan? What's important to you, right? Hey, um, do you need four by four? Is four by four important to you when you're buying your truck, right? What are some of the, the, uh, you know, the key, the perks of the car that you buy next? What would you like it to have, right? Things like that where you're asking them those questions, right? Or like, hey, you know, this car doesn't get a lot of, you know, it's not that great on gas. Is that important to you saving on gas, right? Stuff like that. The same thing as if someone's at a uh, open house, right? And rather than you asking them, you know, hey, do you guys want to make an offer on this property? Like, hey, what did you think about the property? Does this property fit your needs, right? Um, is there anything you liked most? Is there anything that you didn't like about this property, right? What's important to you guys in the next home that you purchase? Because then from there, you can get the client to open up and talk to you so that you can now make a recommendation like an advisor would or a consultant would, right? And what that does is that's gonna bring the guard down dramatically where they don't feel like you're trying to close them and they actually feel like you're trying to listen to them and trying to make a, a recommendation based off what they need. So do you guys see the big difference, guys, between salesperson versus consultant or advisor? Okay, so let's move on. Um, so now with mindset, guys, I want you guys to think of, you know, problems or pain points, right? versus solution, right? So going into this, right? Every client out there, everybody that you work with, every client that you meet, every potential lead that you talk to, they're gonna have some sort of problem or some sort of pain point associated with them buying a house or selling a house, right? There's certain things that it's gonna be a pain point. So what are some of the pain points, guys, that people are facing today with buying or selling? What are some of the most common pain points people are having? Affordability or changing affordability because of interest rates, possibly? Yep, affordability, definitely. That's a huge one, right? A huge thing right now because of the interest rates have gone up. So it's not as affordable for some people because obviously the payments are higher. What's another pain point people might have with buying or selling? Um, why don't we do this, guys? Because of the whole mute and stuff situation, why don't you guys write it in the chat? Write it in the chat. What are the most common pain points that buyers and sellers face? So we have affordability, right? Because of rising interest rates. What's something else that a buyer or a seller might face? Fear of the market, I see that. Fear of the market or doubt.
What's another pain point someone might have? Finding a replacement property. All right, so if someone is going to sell their house and they have to buy another one, trying to find that other home. Right, trying to find that other home or trying to do them both at the same time, right? Trying to sell their home and buy the other one and make it a seamless process, right? Um, price reductions, right? So if you're a seller, if you're looking to sell and homes are sitting on the market longer, people are reducing their prices. So as a seller, that could be a pain point, right? Of like, hey, if I sell right now, I may not get the price that I want, right? Someone wrote fear of making such a large purchase. Yeah, there's some fear, right? Like it's a commitment, especially for a first time buyer. There's a commitment that they have to make now if they've never paid a mortgage payment or maybe they were paying rent and there was a lot less and now they're going to step up to a mortgage payment. There's that fear of having all this responsibility of maintaining a home, of paying for a home and stuff like that. What about inventory? Is inventory a... Um, a pain point people face, right? Not enough homes for sale, right? Or the home that I'm looking for, there's not enough out there. Any other pain points, guys, that you think people face? What about knowledge? Just not knowing what to do, like not understanding the process, right? I've never bought a home before. Um, I don't know where to start, right? That's a pain point. Um, I've never sold a home before. I don't know what to do to get my home for sale or what I should do to prepare it for sale. Do I paint the house? Do I clean the yard up? Does that even matter? Um, stuff like that. These are all pain points, right? Fear of settling for the wrong home, right? So when, when there's not that much inventory and people are just jumping on what's available, they might fear like, shoot, what if another home pops up and this is not really the home that I liked, right? Or what if I miss out on a good deal? Um, commute, um, can't afford in the area they work in, right? They can't afford in the area they work in, so they got to move outside the area to afford it. And now they got to commute and that's a whole nother stress or pain point. Okay, so good. These are all good things, guys. So I, what I want you guys to think of is that when you're speaking to people, right? If you're no longer an agent, you're a marketer, you have to speak to pe people in the language where you're talking about people's problems and people's pain points, right? It's a lot different. And this is kind of what Zyra asked earlier, right? Of giving you an example. It's a lot different than saying, when you're saying like, hey guys, just wanna let you know I'm a real estate agent. If you have any questions, you know, give me a call. Or if you're looking to buy or sell, give me a call, right? It's, that's that's the, the way most agents do it. But a marketer, an agent who understands marketing at a high level and how they have to position themselves is going to speak about a pain point and be the solution to the pain point, right? They're going to say, hey, guys, we noticed that a lot of clients out there, if you're a first-time buyer, you probably don't know where to start. You probably maybe have some fear of what's happening in the market right now. or Maybe you're considering moving out of the area. You don't know if it makes sense for you to move out of the area because you're going to have to commute, right? So now we're talking about pain points that people have, right? What I can offer you guys is a consultation where I'm going to break down all these different areas for you. We're going to go one by one, step by step, so that we can alleviate some of the stresses that you might have, or we can find you the, you know, the best way to find the best deal or help you get into a property in the shortest amount of time or help you sell your property. Uh, without having to make a bunch of price reductions, right? You see how I'm now referencing back all these pain points that you guys just listed? Because now when you reference back the pain points, you're now speaking to what people most fear and what people most, you know, going into the process of buying or selling, right? It's all the different pain points. That's a lot more effective than you just saying, hey, if you have questions about buying or selling, give me a call. Or hey, DM me if you have any questions, right? So the step, the necessary step for you to go from just standard real estate agent, what most people are doing is you have to talk about people's problems and pain points. And you have to talk about that in your dialogue, not only in your video marketing, but when you're on the phones, when you're meeting people face to face, 
when you're on your buyer consultations, that has to now be part of your language where you're talking about the, point, the, the pain points and the fears people have and how you solve those problems and how you give advice based on those problems and how you consult people on how to navigate through these problems and pain points. Does that make sense, guys? Give me a thumbs up if, if, if you're following what I'm saying, right? So right here, this next point, right, is you want to give people a reason why they should meet you or why they should contact you, right? If you're talking about the common problems and the common pain points, which all of these problems are probably, there's probably a list of like the 10 most common pain points when buying or selling a home that most people have, right? So if you understand what these are and you incorporate these into your vocabulary, you can now tailor your marketing towards that and your messaging. And now you're giving people a reason to contact you because you're the person that they see as being able to solve their problem or address their pain point or navigate them through that pain point, right? And that's the takeaway, right? That's this whole section on mindset, right? So it's important that you guys understand going into this, like this is what you have to do if you want to level up and get from just a regular agent who's doing the same shit that every other agent does and you want to be a high level marketer, right? You want to be someone that speaks the language of what people need, right? Not just give me a call if you're looking to buy or sell. Everyone's looking to buy or sell when they're looking to buy or sell, right? Everyone has questions when they're looking to buy or sell. That's already a given. Oh my God. My guard dog in the window. So going forward, guys, going forward, when I see you guys putting videos out there and your whole message is like, hey, give me a call if you're looking to buy or sell, or if you have questions, give me a call. I'm going to now call you out and I'm going to remind you, are you addressing people's problems or pain points? Right? That's the big takeaway is shifting your mindset to when I'm going to make this content or when I'm going to speak to people, I need to address the pain point and the problem, and I need to become the solution to people's problems. Give me a thumbs up or raise your hand if you're okay with me calling you out now when you're, when you're doing what every other agent does. All right. Give me some takeaways, guys. I'm going to turn it over to you guys. Feel free to uh, unmute yourself. What's the takeaway you're getting from here? Or what's is there any are any light bulbs going off for you? Or are you guilty of doing it that way that that what most agents do? Josh, Zyra. I mean, Enrique, I mean, I, I think I think a good thing is, I mean, if you look at some of the content. Right. I think it's just more just tweaking it to what you're what your suggestion and putting out those pain points. Right. Because there's different type of content that I see some of our team putting out. You know, some of it is it's funny. Some of it's showing property. But again, I think, you know, going back to your point, if if you're talking about just don't be so general, actually find that actual that point or that that pain point and go deeper into that. Right. And kind yes. of expose that. Yeah, that's, that's the key takeaway, guys. It's not just with your videos. It's also how you speak to people in general, right? It's also when you're on, a, on your presentation or when you're speaking to someone on the phone is you have to identify what the pain points are and show them how you're going to be the solution. And I think, yeah, yeah, and I think, I think while you're doing it on the phone, you know, again, if we're getting, not, not the social yeah. media, but when you're on the phone or if you're in person, the best way to do that is by asking questions. Correct. Is just basically just asking questions, finding out what their concerns are, finding out what what are their what are their hurdles, what's holding them back, you know, what what are they, you know, what what and finding out maybe even what their next step is, right? And you can come come up with the common pain points for those next steps that we've seen. Correct. I think they're almost two separate things because, like, if I'm posting a video, I'm it's it is broad because i'm trying to attract multiple people but if i'm but if i'm like actually speaking to somebody face to face or on the phone that's where i'm able to ask questions and whatever their concern is i know it and i'm able to address it but i don't know how to 
cons like how to do that in a video. I feel like they're almost two separate things. That's that's actually a great that's a great comment and great feedback, Lily. Is so what what I would challenge you to do is I would challenge you to change your mindset around your videos having to be too broad, right? And that's what that's the mistake that a lot of people make is that they're trying to appeal to everybody, right? And when you're trying to appeal to everybody, then you're going to make your videos more broad. Remember, if you just choose a topic, right? This is assuming you're going to, you're not just doing one video and that's it, right? If you're only going to do one video, then I could see you trying to put a broad video out there, you know, try to attract people. But if your job going forward is you're a marketer and you put yourself out there and you have powerful messages and you have valuable content, you have to pick a topic for each video. There has to be like a concise message and you have to be speaking to someone in that video. All right, so I would challenge you to get out of wanting to make your videos broad and to find a topic or a pain point and just really go deep on that video. And it's going to resonate with somebody because we already identified that there's probably the, the 10 most common pain points, right? Um, does that make sense? What comes to my mind is like storytelling. So you know, that would be an opportunity to say, I had a, this problem and this is how I solved it in my, you know, marketing video, if I had the guts to make the videos. Well, yeah. yeah. No, and that's true, right? Stories, what do they say? Facts tell, stories sell, right? So there's the facts, but then when you put a story behind that, it's going to make it that much more powerful, right? So starting off your video or your content or even your conversation with like, hey, most you know, we've identified that most clients are going through this, or this is a common thing that we're seeing with buyers across the board right now, or this is a common thing that sellers are facing. And let me tell you a little story, right? That's just going to take the point and drive it even home even further. Um, but yeah, you're on the right track with, with stories. Stories will just take it to another level. Um, Enrique, and other than, I mean, I know we've developed this already, where we have a list of topics for videos, right? I know um, DJ has provided that. Yeah, the most common topics that are out there, if you just if you just Google like frequently asked questions or whatever, but what I'm really trying to get at is not just what the topics are. I'm, get, I'm, I'm really trying to build the mindset of, I have to come from a place of speaking like a consultant or an advisor, right? To take you from like amateur to more advanced, right? To level yourself up from brand new agent to someone who speaks a more powerful language is you have to speak in like, in this manner, right? There has to be an elevated conversation. The same, the, just doing what most agents do of like, hey, if you have any questions, call me. That doesn't work because every agent is doing the same thing. So in order to be different, you, you, have, to, you have to be able to, to speak it in a, in a different way. Right, because everybody else is doing the same thing. If you're looking to buy, call me. Right, like that's the, it's the general message in like in different ways, either video or postcard or or text or whatever. Hey, just if you're looking to buy, call me. Right, like that doesn't do anything to get me to want to call you. That's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, and I think just just to make it easier, because a lot of times, like I know we came, you guys came up with those ten pain points, but I think. For, for our newer agents, some of them don't even know what to make videos of, right? Yeah. So again, if we can expose that list and maybe we have to go deeper into some of those topics, yeah. right? I think, cause again, it is one, we're gonna be telling you know, all of us what to do, but now it's like, no, this is how you're gonna do or this is what you're gonna talk on. Yeah. Right? I think it's important to go there. Yeah, we can, gen we can definitely generate the list for you and we will do that. So we'll put that together. But what I also want to do is I also want to teach you guys how to fish, right? Not just give you the fish. I want to teach you how to fish. So I want to teach you that if you just come from a place of like, hey, when I'm going to speak a message, I have to identify what the problem is ahead of time or what the most common problem is. Then it's real easy to find the content after that if you just know this is how I have to do it, right? The list, we can give you like a cheat sheet to make it faster and easier and, and we will do that. But understand that the mindset behind it. Um, Okay, let's move forward, guys. Um, so now that we have that mindset, there's a couple of little things that we want to kind of go over to make you a more effective marketer, right? So number one is identifying who your client is, right? Who your ideal client is. 
um, and spending some time on that, right? So type it in the chat, guys, real quick. Like if you can pick an ideal client, like what would your ideal client be or who are the clients that you're most commonly working with or who are the clients that you want to most commonly work with, right? How would you describe them, right? Type that in the chat real quick. Either, you know, marital status, job, profession, uh, you know, stuff like that. What would describe your most ideal client? Qualified, motivated. I want you to give me a little bit more than that, right? Like, what's the, what's the avatar, the profile, right? Is it like a young professional? Is it husband and wife, first time buyer? Is it someone with a need? So if someone wanted to buy like a $50,000 mobile home and they had a need, is that your ideal client? This is where I'm going to challenge you now, right? So clients who listen to your advice. Um, yeah, this guy wants to, he wants to rent a condo for a thousand bucks and wants to see if you can help him. And he's willing to listen to you, Manny. SOI. Um, Zyra, your cousin wants to buy a house, but he's not pre-approved. So is that your ideal client? You see what I'm saying? Like, this is where you got to get specific. Like, who's your ideal client? So look at, look what Jason wrote. 760 FICO, $1.5 million buyer, 20% down, ready to buy in 30 to 60 days, 26 to 45 years old. That's pretty darn specific, right? Someone who, com who communicates well, responsive, open-minded. Um, hey, I'm responsive. I'm open-minded. I communicate well, but I don't have any money, Connie. Am I your ideal client? Sellers moving up, there are sellers and buyers, two transactions. So identifying your ideal client, this could be like, okay, someone looking to buy a single family home or a townhouse or a condo in a price point of at least a million to $2 million. They're pre-approved already. Uh, they're most likely a small business owner or someone that works in tech and they're looking to buy in the next 30 to 60 days, right? Something like that. Um, most of my clients are either young professionals or they're young newlywed couples trying to buy for the first time, or there may be sellers who have lived, you know, empty nesters who have lived in a neighborhood for 20 to 30 years. And now they're looking to sell and downgrade or move out of the area, right? This is now where you're being very specific. And it's someone that's looking to buy in the Silicon Valley, right? Um, not someone who's looking to buy in Fresno or something like that. So it's important that you guys understand this because you want to be able to kind of build out your ideal client or the avatar of your ideal client so that you can now understand like, okay, these are the types of clients I work with. These are the types of pain points my clients have. These are the types of things my clients can relate to. These are, this is the type of language or type of customer I'm dealing with, right? Are they educated, you know, high level? Do they, do they have degrees and stuff like that? Are they engineers? Like when you start getting really specific on your ideal client, you can start to formulate how you present yourself, right? How you present yourself and start speaking the language of what your ideal client is. Because let's say like, Jay, if your ideal client, you see how Jason was really specific in his ideal client and he said 760 FICO, uh, $1.5 million buyer, 20% down, ready to buy in 30 to 60 days, 26 to 45 years old. So that's Jason's ideal client. So I want you guys to really pay attention to this. Listen to this, this is important. He told me what his ideal client was. So would it make sense for Jason to put out video or content or call people who need to get their credit fixed, who are looking to buy uh, you know, condos and find the cheapest home, find homes under $500,000, um, bad credit, okay, we'll help you get it fixed. You see how that's like now counterintuitive to the ideal client that he's trying to attract, right? Because then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put that message out and then you're gonna get people that call you that have bad credit and that are looking for like the cheapest house in the neighborhood. But if that's not your ideal client and you're putting out that message, are you working closer to your goal or are you working further away from your goal, right? Or of attracting that ideal client. 
So remember, everything that you say when you're putting yourself out there from how you speak to people, from how you put your messaging out there, from how you talk to friends, family, all those different things is depending on what you're, what you're talking about or how you're saying you are, uh, what's the word? You are attracting people, right? Without you even knowing it. So if you're always talking about like down payment assistance programs and like, hey, did you know you can get in with 3% down and like down payment assistance, you can buy a house with zero down and like all this stuff. Well, guess who's going to be DMing you? The guy that has no money, right? The guy that has zero down. And he just saw this message you put out there and it sounded pretty good to him. So he hit you up. Does that make sense? You guys follow, you guys follow what I'm saying? So your messaging, what you put out there, what you say, how you say it, and who you're targeting it towards, towards, right? Is what you're gonna attract in the long run. Now, that doesn't mean that like if a client hits you up out of nowhere, it's a referral. And it doesn't necessarily fit the bracket of what you're looking for. That doesn't mean you may not service that client. That doesn't mean you may not, you know, refer it or partner up with someone. But is that the message that you want to keep putting out there to attract those clients, right? You want to put the message out there that is going to attract your ideal client. So the type of properties you show, right? Like if you're trying to attract $2 million clients and you're doing property tours of condos that are 500,000 is that going to attract 2 million dollar buyers probably not right so remember it's really up to you on how you want to build your business and how you want to put your brand out there and how you want to market yourself but you need to know in your mind that what I'm putting out there that's what I'm going to attract so if your goal is like, hey, I want to make more money in real estate. Well, there's one way to make more money. It's go after higher price point clients. So then you need to start speaking the language of higher price point clients. You need to start showcasing properties that higher price point clients might want to see, right? You need to identify who those higher price point clients are and put the messaging out that is going to resonate with that type of client who buys higher price point properties. That's just an example. Um, so we talked about problems and pace, uh, pain points, right? Like the problems and pain points that this type of client has might be different from the problems that this type of client has, right? So whichever client you're trying to attract, and when you're talking about the problems and pain points, you also want to speak about the ones that apply towards your ideal client. Now, you may have, you may have a couple different ideal clients, right? Maybe you service two different types of clients. Hey, I work with first-time buyers you know, in this segment, and I also like these type of clients as well. So I'm going to mix these two up, right? But I think it's important that you don't, you're not just all over the place where it's like very, very different. Um, because then that could be a confusing message to clients out there as well, right? If you're like just going left and then you're going all the way right and then you're going all the way left and it's like, all right, well, who, which type of agent are you? Who are you going after, right? Um, you know, so a client that shops at the dollar store or, you know, nothing wrong with a dollar store, but um, versus the client who goes to, I don't know, whatever the opposite of the dollar store is, um, to buy stuff is might be two different types of clients, right? Or a client who goes to Lucky's versus a client who only goes to Whole, Whole Foods, right? Because whatever is associated with that might be a different type of client, right? Or a client who shops, shops at Macy's versus a client who goes to Bloomingdale's or Nordstrom might be two different levels of clients as well, right? So you got to understand who these clients are and who you're trying to go after and what messaging you want to put out that resonates with them. All right, we've got a few more minutes, guys. We're only going till, till two o'clock and then we'll wrap this up. 
Um, next thing, guys, is what are your unique, unique, uh, what are your unique values that you bring to the table? So I think this is an important one, guys, right here, because when you're speaking to people, if you're not able to articulate what's unique about you or why someone would want to work with you, right? It's like having an elevator pitch, right? Like if someone was, was to meet you out on the street or if you were in the elevator and someone was rubbing shoulders with you and they're like, hey, what do you do, right? You need to be able to give them your one minute elevator pitch. What is it that you do? Who do you serve? And maybe what's unique about you, right? So what I want you guys to write in the chat right now, um, can you give an example of what our pitch would sound like? Yeah, that's what we're gonna come up with right now. That's the last part of this segment is what is unique about you? So what are the three unique things about you as a real estate agent? Write that in the chat. Your three unique values. What's unique about you that would make We're you- You're cutting different? in and out. Can you hear me now? How do I sound? Thumbs up? Good? Okay. Um, what is unique about you? What makes you different from any other agent? Write the three bullet points that makes you unique in the chat. So let's go around whoever is on right now. In the chat, what are the three things about you that make you different as a real estate agent? or that is unique to you. If you don't know what is unique to you, maybe write down what you think would be unique to you or something that would make you stand out amongst other agents. What are some of the things that can make you stand out amongst other agents? Write that in the chat. I see Liliana wrote, not pushy. So if someone, if someone said, hey, uh, Lily, what's, you know, what's the difference between you and all these other agents out there? What would, what would you say? Um, I would probably say something about like not being pushy and like, I don't care about selling them the first house that they see. I want to provide like the like the knowledge to help them fit, like kind of figure out what they want. I don't know. I don't want them to have buyer's remorse at the end of it. So I want to make sure that it's what they really like, not just trying to make a commission. Okay. So let's take what she said and boil that down to a point, right? So what I hear is not, not pushy, right? Um, not just going to sell them something, right? just the salesperson. And basically what you described is you're someone who's more of like a consultant or an advisor, right? Like you wanna make sure they find the right house, stuff like that. So consultant. Slash advisor, right? Okay. Um, Connie wrote, I'm experienced in both renting and buying side. I'm born and raised in the area that I serve. Um, right. So that can also be like local expertise, right? Like your local market expert. Um, you can have experience, right? Experience X amount of years in the business, right? And when people say experience, like if you're newer in the game, it doesn't necessarily just like mean like, oh, I've been in the business for so long. 
it can, you can say like, you can leverage the experience of the team, right? Like my team and I have X amount of experience, or we've done this many transactions, or we've helped this, you know, this amount of people last year. Um, Manny wrote young professional who does real estate full time. So full time. Young, right? Manny's young, so we can use that to his advantage, right? So right now I'm just kind of listing the bullet points, right? What else? What's another thing that can be looked at as like a plus or something when someone's like, why are you different or what makes you special in terms of real estate? This is the last part of the, uh, the training. We're going to wrap up. We're going to come up with an elevator pitch right now and give you kind of the framework of how you can prepare your own elevator pitch. Um, knowledge, right? So knowledge and experience. So knowledge can come in the form of your experience, but also like, let's say you're certified or you've taken classes, right? I'm a certified this, or I'm a certified luxury property specialist, or I'm a certified senior, whatever. Right. Or even on our team, let's say you graduated mentorship and now you're like a team specialist or you're a senior agent on our team. Hey, I'm at the I'm in the senior agent level position on our team, which means that I've surpassed, you know, all this training and mentorship to get to where I'm at. And I, I had to do X amount of transactions to get there. Right. That's like, OK, now that's why I'm different versus the other guy. Like, oh, yeah, I'm just I'm a real estate agent. been doing this for 10 years. Right. That doesn't. You see how like there has to be more to it for you to give that elevator pitch, right? An elevator pitch is, is really going to be like your one minute, two minute shot to tell someone what you're all about or why you're special or why you're unique or why they might want to continue the conversation, right? Whether it's on the phone, whether it's in an email, whether it's, it's your pitch on a video content, right? Whether it's face-to-face -face when you're meeting with a, a client for the first time and you're showing them a property or whether you're going to a seller's house to potentially list their home, this is where you have to make sure there's some sort of elevator pitch or something that you at least know what is unique about you and how you can position yourself different from every other agent. Because what I'll tell you right now is that most agents, they don't have an elevator pitch at all. So like right off the bat, if you have an elevator pitch, even if it's not, not like the best one or the most fanciest one or the most articulate one, you already beat like more than half the agents out there that aren't even talking about what's unique about them, right? And then when you do have an elevator pitch and you're going up against another top agent who probably does have an elevator pitch, that's when like all these little things that are different about you will separate you from the crowd, right? So, in your elevator pitch, the things that we talked about, like your ideal client, the problems that people face and your, your unique values, right? These things right here, that's really the framework for your elevator pitch. So let's say I was gonna put together an elevator pitch based off of this information that you gave me, right? Um, so who wants to role play this with me real quick? Okay, Lily, we just met in an elevator, right? Okay. And you asked me like, you say, oh, hey, how's it going, right? Like we're coming out of a building or wherever we're at, right? We met and, oh, what do you do, right? That's, that's basically the script. You're going to ask me what I do. And I'm going to put mm -hmm. together just freestyle an elevator pitch right now based off what you told me. Okay, but are, are you my ideal client? No, I'm just showing you how to put together an ele elevator pitch, right? Okay. I'm, I'm going to do the elevator pitch on you. Oh, okay. I, who am I? We're going to flip it around. You're just someone that I bumped into in the elevator. Okay, got it. I didn't know if I was like the, the agent or... Okay, got it. And then we'll flip the roles around and you'll try it. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, okay, so you're going to ask me like, what do I do, right? I bumped into you. Hey, what's up? Hey, how's it going? All right. Oh, hi. So what do you do? 
Oh, hey, that's a great question. Um, actually, I'm a I'm a real estate agent here in the Santa Clara County. I've uh, been doing this for about 20 years now. Um, and really what I specialize in, right, what makes me different from all the other agents out there is that we do about 200 transactions a year, which means we have a lot of experience when it comes to working with buyers and sellers. Um, you know, I find that most buyers have no clue what's happening right now in the market and like how these changes with the interest rates are going to affect them or even what the programs are or where to get started. And so we really specialize in like helping buyers walk themselves through the process and know exactly what they're getting themselves into before they buy a home. Oh, that's cool. All right. Um, <laughs> so you didn't really I'll, ask I'll, me like an on open-ended question. I don't you people answer to that. So what I, the, the point of this exercise guys is really taking that information, right? And being able to put that into like a short elevator pitch, right? That was probably a little long. Like if I mentioned an elevator, I'd probably condense that more. Um, but I want you to get the gist of you being able to know what is unique about you, right? So that when you're speaking to anybody anywhere, you now like know like this is, this is what Lily brings to the table. Right. So I have a question. So let's say like, like, for example, like the one that Connie uh, wrote, how she was like born and raised in the area and she knows it really well. Yeah. Um, that's how I feel about like Gilroy and Morgan Hill. Like if you put me up in that area compared to another agent from San Jose, I don't care how top of an agent that person is. I know my area. I know the streets. I know how the properties are different um, because it's a little bit different than like growing up in the city. Um, like if it was a very generalized elevator pitch about like I can sell you myself if you're looking to buy in Gilroy, Morgan Hill, Hollister. Um, I know that one, but I don't feel that confident doing like an over one in other areas. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. And and here's the thing is, obviously, depending on the situation or the scenario that you're in, you can tweak your elevator pitch or you can add or subtract. Because okay. you being a, you being a specialist in the Gilroy area, because you were born and raised there and you, you know the area, that's only one part of the equation, right? Right. Because, uh, I mean, I would, is that, unless that's what you want to define yourself as, right? But that's not what makes you a great agent. That's part of what makes you a good agent when you're working with the client who's looking in that area, but it's right. not the only thing, right? So it's important that you're able to like identify what are the top three or four things that makes me a great agent. And if I'm, if I'm working an open house in Gilroy, well, I'm going to also add the fact that I know these streets and I know the neighborhood and all that stuff, right? Yeah. But remember, <laughs> one is... That that is only going to be important to someone at a specific time and place. Right. Well, the reason I was saying it was because, like, for your pitch, for example, you were talking about like buyers. But if I'm a seller, is that going to be helpful? So my question is, do we have to have one elevator pitch for like our niche, or we do we have like a generic one? Um, I would say have like a, a sort of generic one, and then you can go into some details depending on the situation you're in. So. Um, if I work with buyers and sellers, I would say I work with buyers and sellers, right? Okay. And I would say, hey, this is what's unique about me. This is the area I serve. And this is how I help buyers. And this is how I help sellers, right? Okay. You know, and you could even be general, right? You can say like, like hey, um, I, we, my team and I, we service the whole entire Silicon Valley. We work with buyers and sellers. And we, we really take a lot of the pain points out of buying and selling real estate where a lot of clients don't know where to start. They don't know where to start with buying a home or even selling a home. Um, we have step-by-step -step processes on how we walk people through these things so that they can have you know, the least amount of hassle and they can get the best result in the quickest amount of time, right? Okay. So, so I guess I'm still having trouble figuring out how do you condense that into a pitch? Because even as we're having a conversation, it's been longer than just like a quick, why you should work with me. And remember, it's it's gonna it's not like a one sh one size fits all, right? So, if you're like if it's a quick like you met someone in the grocery store and you're not really gonna sit there and chop it up with them, then you might want to condense it. But if you're on a if you're on a call or you have someone on the line, or if you're like at an open house and you have someone in front of you that's talking to you for a while, 
you right. can expand a little bit more on on what it is, right? So, um, I, I can do the elevator pitch now. I'll be okay. the seller. Uh, can I have oh. a just know what we talked about prior to you asking me what I do? Yeah. So, so now, so now we're going to change the scenario, right? The other scenario okay. was we're in an elevator. Now, now you're at an open house in Gilroy, right? Got you're it. hosting an open house and I'm a buyer coming in and we're talking and stuff like that. Um, and I have an agent, but I'm going to, I want to know, you know, Hey, you seem pretty nice. You know, why, sh why should I, you know, what's the difference between you and like this other guy I met from Intero? Yeah. Well, where does your um, agent work out of? Um, so, yeah, I met this agent at another open house, and I'm not sure what office he works out of, but he's at Intero, and he seemed pretty cool. I'm not really committed to him, but, I mean, you seem pretty nice, too. So, I guess what, what makes you, you know, what's the difference with you and, you know, any other agent? Well, the reason I asked who that agent was because I wanted to know if that agent services this area. I also worked at Intero, so I know a lot of the agents that, are local to here. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure what, what specific office or area he works in. Okay, well, the reason that I ask is because Gilroy is a little bit unique. I mean, the fact that we are really close to San Jose really stands out, but this property in particular that you're looking at is on half an acre of land. Do you have experience on living on like what we call like, um, uh, like uh, ranch properties or? Okay, let me stop you there, right? We're, I want you just to give me your quick pitch of why you're different, right? Like not walk me through the whole dialogue of, of like pre-qualifying me um, okay. for, the, for the purpose of this, this thing, right? Like that, that's great. You would want to do that like in the real life setting, but let's just get the pitch. That's it. Cause we got to wrap up. Okay. So yeah. Um, hey, um, you know, I was telling my wife, you know, we have an age, we have an agent that we've been talking to. We, we haven't signed anything, but. Okay. Uh, he's at Intero. He seemed pretty nice, but you seem pretty nice too. You know, we're looking for a home. Like what, what makes you different than, you know, than any other agent? Well, I'm nicer. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. Um, well, you're looking here in Gilroy. I was born and raised, so I know the area really well. Um, I can kind of guide you. It looks like you're not from the area. So, um, you know, it's totally different. Uh, so if you want a local expert, somebody that can kind of give you a little bit of insight on uh, what areas uh, are good for what different reasons, like I can definitely be that person that can kind of guide you. If specifically, this is an area that you're really interested in, which I assume that it is because it's quite a little ways away from where you live. So you at least have some curiosity. I'd love to be able to chat and kind of get some time together so I can kind of show you why you should work with me instead of this other nice agent. Okay, good, 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 good. All right, good job, good job. Um, so it was great that you walked me through the, the fact that you're from Gilroy. What I, would, what I would encourage you to do is to add some of the other points of what makes you a great agent, right? So that's not, the Gilroy part, that's a big thing, right? If I'm looking in Gilroy, but also maybe talk about your experience, talk about you know what you specialize in, right? That could just be Gilroy, that could be a certain type of client, um, right? So I would... I would add, add a couple more bullet points, at least three bullet points, right? The Gilroy could be one and then two other bullet points to the kind of like just wrap it up. So like for what, when I was saying that I think one of the things I like is that I'm not pushy, how would I add that onto that little you? So to say you're not pushy, right? Like not pushy is, that's kind of a like really, you know, more slang kind of term, but how can you say not pushy in a way you could say, hey, uh, um, we, I find that a lot of clients are intimidated by the process and maybe, you know, they need someone that's going to be able to walk them through it and not feel like they have to buy the first house that they see. You know, I really like to sit down with my clients and really consult them and advise them and make sure we're getting them the best possible deal. Right. That's a way of me taking not pushy and actually making it more powerful. Right. And touching on some of the pain points that people go through. Okay. Okay. Right. So let's try that one more time and then, and then, and then that's it. And then we're done. We're done Wait, with the session. I'm doing it again. You're doing it again, but, uh, but I want you to incorporate, I want you to have three bullet points, right. In your elevator pitch and you can shorten it, right. It doesn't have to be so long, but maybe just the three little things really quick. So, um, I'm Millie, not really sure what, I can't hear you. Uh, okay. So Gilroy, you're experiencing Gilroy. 
Got it. You're not pushy, right? How, however you're going to phrase that. And then what's the other thing that makes you makes you great? I don't know. <laughs> I literally don't. How long have you been in the business? Experience? Uh, going on six years. Going on six years. And how many clients did you help last year? 16. Okay, there you go. So 16 clients, right? And you can always like, hey, I helped, I helped close to 20 clients last year. Like you can always like round up or whatever, right? It doesn't have to be exactly 16.5 or whatever, right? So, so we're going to say, Gilroy, the fact that you're not pushy and the fact that you're experienced, whether you want to say how many years or how many clients you've, you've helped, right? Okay. Um, so, hey, Lily, um, hey, thanks for showing us the house. You know, we have an agent we've been talking to a little bit, but you know, you seem pretty nice. You know, what what makes you different, I guess, from, from some of these other agents? Well, for starters, I will say that I know the area that you're looking in, so I'd be more than happy to help you uh, kind of guide you through the area if you have any questions. I've been doing real estate for six years. Um, last year, I helped 16 families. Uh, about 90% of those families that I helped was here in Gilroy and in Morgan Hill. So I'm definitely that person to go to. Um, I also, um, I kind of want to guide you and kind of go over what it is that you're looking for. That way, I don't just send you a ton of homes uh, so you can buy one. That way, I can kind of really get an idea of what it is that you're looking for. I can kind of sit down and walk you through the process. Process. And then not only that, but really kind of pinpoint how I can help you. All right, let's give it up. All right, round of applause. Let's go. That was good. That was good. Um, you're on the spot, obviously, right? So you, some of that you're just freestyling it. But mm -hmm. what I what I want you to take away from is that that's a lot more powerful than just saying like I'm a Gilroy expert right or like go with me because you know i'm better right or whatever like you have to speak to the points that make you unique and be able to pitch that to someone and as you do it more it's going to come off more fluid it's, it's going to be easier and maybe even as you grow within the business you're going to identify other things that make you unique and you'll be able to add those in when you need to depending on the situation right like if i'm going to walk into like a, a property that needs to be fixed up I have a lot of experience in construction and fixing up properties. I'm going to talk about that more. If I'm at, in Gilroy and I've sold homes in Gilroy, I'm going to talk about that more, right? So you can tailor your, your pitch depending on who you're in front of, right? But the key thing is there has to be some sort of pitch and you have to be speaking it in a way that people are going to go, okay, she's different because of this, this, and that, right? Not just another agent. Um, Good job. Good job, guys. That's it for time, guys. I want to keep these down to an hour. I know we went a couple minutes over. Um, so let me guys, let me know if you guys need anything, guys. We'll wrap. We'll continue this again next Monday, one to two with a new topic. And hope you guys got some value today, guys. Thank you so much for showing up. So.